Kathy. I've lived most everywhere from Zanzibar to Berkeley Square. I'm Patty, and I've only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights, but I also love the rock and roll, and a hot dog makes me lose control. But we're cousins, identical cousins, two pairs of matching bookends, different as night and day. Welcome everybody to Living Figuratively with your host, Patty, uh, pa Kathy, Judy Takas. This is the show that asks the question, why not fill your home with the fascinating faces and figures of people that you don't even know? Why not fill your home with figurative art? Today, I take you on the road to, for our 46th episode, to the Cuyahoga Valley Art Center, which is in, nestled in this beautiful little area of Cuyahoga Falls, which I didn't even realize was so cute, um, to the show Detailed, curated by Daniel Dietrich, and it includes the work of Beth Lindenberger, who is a sculptor and ceramicist, and Mark Giangaspero, who is a painter that you drooled over two weeks ago when I showed you, you know, how we were getting high in the living room. So I was thrilled to be able to come down and see this actual show. Now, you might be thinking, why would they put a painter, a, you know, a figurative painter with a ceramicist? Their work is different as night and day. Well, that's the whole thing. In, um, Art, in the art world, there is this thing called juxtaposition. And juxtaposition is where you put two things next to each other to spotlight the differences, to spotlight the similarities, to have one show up traits in another one. They, it, it, it's designed, juxtaposition is designed to make you see parallels in things, to say, make you see perpendiculars in things, to make you see the commonalities between things. Um, it's one of those art principles that they stress in art education as a way to sort of get you outside of your thinking inside your head, to get you thinking outside the box and to thinking conceptually and to thinking compositionally. And just to get on my little art education soapbox here, um, I feel that principles that you learn when you're making art are really good to be applied to principles that every career can use. Uh, you know, whether it's CEOs, inventors, politicians, the purpose of art education should not so much be to get more people to go into art, it should be to get art to go into more people. So that's kind of my thing. Um, the And coincidentally, we're here at the Cuyahoga Valley Art Center where they have tons of classes some of them given by Mark Jangasparo, some of them given by Beth Lindenberger. So look up on their web website and see if maybe there's a class you might be interested in taking to expand your mind. They're, the classes are very socially distanced and there's quite a few of them now because they have to have fewer people in the classes. So check that out. But we're here to see the show, which is exactly what we're gonna do. The, um, I'm gonna start with uh, Mark Jangasparo's work, who Obviously, I absolutely love his work. I have pieces of his in my collection, and I love seeing them. I love having them hanging high. He is the quintessential figurative painter, portrait painter, who will go there. And by go there, I mean where he's not, he's not shy about showing things the way they are. He's not shy about, he doesn't shy away from the uncomfortable and maybe the sort of the more visceral human aspects of of people and you know what what is our humanity essentially and um it's it's a difficult line to toe because quite you know often in the hands of a lesser artist it can veer off into caricature it can veer off into insensitivity it can veer off into schmaltziness it can veer off into flattery that denies the actual existence and the actual truth of your subject because you can flatter the heck out of somebody and basically make them look no longer like what they look like. Um, so Mark John Gasparo has, 
has that where he will go there. Um, his, he's got no less than seven portraits of Mrs. M here in his, in this show. And these are some of the smaller ones. These are, this one is unfinished. Um, he also has portraits of Dave, who you may recognize from my house two weeks ago. Uh, this is a full length, full length portrait of him. And we have uh, a portrait of Dave where it's just his face, but you know, it's gigantic that was hanging on high. And coincidentally, which I didn't know, Dave is actually the son of Mrs. M, who Mark, John Sparrow, it's very obvious he loves painting her. And um, one of the things that, that is obvious to me about Bill Love is that he's painted her so many times and the joy is obvious. When you have a subject or a muse that you can go back over and over and over again and paint them from you know different angles, different ways, different um, different perspectives. It's you know the joy is apparent. And these ones behind me here, which are more like the the ones you know that I have in my house, they have a very graphic quality to them. He still does go there you know he still does show the the uncomfortable the good the bad the the you know sh sheer humanity of mrs m but because they're black and white because he's used this reserved color and like just gorgeous little details like this little stripe of blue there that he has um, and the, the stark blue eyes, not just plain old blue eyes. He's used this very, very graphic, gorgeous blue there. It, it makes it into something that's maybe even a little more decorative and easier to decorate your home with. One of my favorite things that he does with this, you know, the, the uh, multi, um, where it's a little bit of black and white, a little bit of color, this ear here. I think this ear might be my favorite thing in the show. I just love how he's made the ear red, and that is a definitely a human, a human trait, human thing. Ears are more red because the light shines through them, and there's all these blood vessels in them. And um, for him to spotlight that and make it just this beautiful graphic element, it's it's just just gorgeous. And these, you know, making them gigantic like this, really, it just sort of drives it home. And I feel like that they are even more comfortable in your home when they're this gigantic because you're saying this is this is a gorgeous person a fascinating person that I want to live with and have, have here you know and tell stories about and think about um, one of the things also about painting age older older people well you see very very old people uh, Mrs. M has passed away very recently Mark was saying that this is um, something like where it, it's sort of looking at your own mortality too and celebrating the aging process at the same time. You know, he paints, he paints these older people, and this is all one older person, as if, as if her traits are just the, like the best traits in the world, like with this fun and enthusiasm. And wouldn't it be nice if we all could look at the aging process that way, instead of denying it and shunning it and trying to use all kinds of anti-aging stuff and pretending like it's not gonna happen, if we embrace it as if the, you know, these lines that you get from wisdom and years were, were um, rewards and honors. And, uh, you know, like this one, the, this gorgeous little pink, her, her little hat to keep her warm, just that little tiny squeak of pink. And it, it's sort of acknowledging aging. And um, so basically, Mark's work is all about the endings and acknowledging the latter part of life. Um, Beth Lindenberger's work, because today is Opposites Day and Night and Day Day, uh, Beth Lindenberger's work is all about beginnings. Her shapes are inspired by uh, natural forms. She has things like work um, called, there's one, one of them that's called Brechtel, which is a plant part 
that is, is like a pod where the flowers shoots from. Um, she's got other things that are reminiscent of seeds and progeneration, which is the basically the um, where things are born. So, you know, seeds growing and potential for growth and um, all kinds of positive things about the beginnings. Um, many of these pieces that you see here just posed in front of Mark John Vespero's work are called Karen's. And that's spelled C-A-I-R-N, not Karen like it, what we've been calling them, ladies with the wrong haircut and the wrong attitude these days. Um, these Karens are basically, they're, they're iconic little memorials or guideposts or markings on trails to guide your way. And they're also markings in life. And they're kind of a thing where you look for symbolism. And she has found symbolism in these cairns and has some you know, amazing sculptures with these. So she, her work is all about beginnings and celebrating that. And Mark's work is all about celebrating the other end of it. Um, and with both of them with just sensitivity and detail. And that's why the show is called Detailed. Detailed. Um, I'm gonna finish up with showing you what I think is maybe the most gripping visceral piece in the show, in a show of, of very gripping visceral pieces. Mark John Mispero has painted his wife, Shelley, here. And this one, she painted, she, she chose to pose. She wasn't just sort of an indulgent, indulgent model wife where you have a lot of those, where they're like, all right, fine. Um, she actually chose to pose for this because in the middle of probably, you know, the most vulnerable, scary time in your life, which is in the middle of cancer, where you're in the middle of chemo, you're in, you've are you just come out of surgery, um, you know, with a double mastectomy, and um, you're, you're at a very, very low point in your, in your scariness life. Um, but she chose to pose for this because she wanted to make, it was several statements, she wanted to make a statement about how women's bodies have been, you know, ha are held to this impossible standard of beauty and flawlessness and everything, and that it's okay to not be that way. It's you're not alone. In fact, you are way more not alone if you are, you know, flawed and brave than if you are, you know, fit into that very narrow standard of what beauty is in society, youth and beauty in society. And he's towed a really tricky line here because he presents her, I mean, this is your wife. So it's hard to draw, it's hard to paint your wife, especially in this situation. So the fact that she trusted him to, to do that is, is awesome. And the fact that he presented her as such a powerful, heroic figure, also acknowledging the difficulty and the uncomfortableness of the situation that um, she was in at that time. Uh, luckily, this is 15 years ago, and she is doing well, and she's healthy, because everybody always wants to know that with paintings that I've painted of my mom, um, when she was going through her cancer with, you know, the bald hair and everything, people always wanted to know how she was um, at the time. And uh, so, yes, she's, in fact, she, I secretly messaged her and asked her about this, this painting instead of asking Mark about it. Um, but this is, you know, I feel like this piece is a beautiful, a beautiful, stunning piece. And the graphic quality where he's used the limited color, he's used the blue as the, to, to, discuss, to define the scars. And she's got this beautiful steely blue eyes. It's really, it's, and the, the blue lips too. You know, that I think is an artistic, an artistic touch that, that just, it, it just drives it home. This is a beautiful, beautiful portrait. And I think, I'm not positive, but I think this one was in the, one of the, um, uh, best in Show winners at the um, the, uh, at the Lakeland May Show a couple of years ago when the Lakeland May Show was was held as opposed to last year where it had to be canceled due to COVID. But anyway, thank you for joining me tonight for Living Figuratively. Um, 
I want to make sure that you guys know you can come to this show. It, it's a physical show that you can come to. You don't even have to schedule a time. You can just come by. And one of the best kept secrets of art shows in the Cleveland area and in many other areas too, is that they are super socially distanced. You, you know, you wear a mask, you've got your hand sanitizer right here at the door, and there's never anybody here. There's never anybody at art shows. You know, even during normal times, people don't go to art shows, and whenever you go, you're most likely gonna be alone at, in the gallery, aside from the opening receptions, but nobody's having those anymore. So, come to the show, see it in person, because these really, you know, on videotape and online, uh, no justice is done to how gorgeous these pieces are. So, don't forget to come to the Valley Art. This is the Cuyahoga Valley Art Center in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. So, um, be sure to come back next week and join me for the special New Now episode where I do a little preview and show you my works in the Artist's Archives New Now show, which every year normally, or every other year they have it, they normally have it at the Tri-C Gallery East, which is a big, beautiful gallery space that, you know, you can really spread out and all kinds of, you know, you can, uh, it holds a lot of art, big art, everything, all kinds of installations. Unfortunately, the gallery is closed due to COVID, so the show had to go online. So it's an online show, uh, which is why my paintings in the show are at my house. So I will show you my paintings in the show, and then at seven o'clock, you can join the Zoom opening reception where Kat Sheridan, who is the juror, or the, the only judge for the show, will present the awards, and um, hopefully we'll get to see some of the other pieces in the show. I'm sure we'll get to see at least some of them. Uh, and all the works will be online. So next week, Thursday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, February 18th, same bad time, same bad channel. Y'all come back and we'll be here.